The real lathe is almost finished. With the bed, headstock, counter shaft, and tool rest all done, it's time to turn our attention to the other end of the lathe. And when we look down here, we're missing the tailstock. And that's pretty important. If you've never tried to build one of these before, it's really easy to take a tailstock for granted. This design has evolved over a long time, and it works so well that we can pretty much just ignore it. But it actually might be the most complicated part of the lathe. The tailstock has to move back and forth on the ways, and you have to be able to lock it in place. It has a Morse taper in the end that has to accept accessories, and they have to come in and out quickly and easily. It has a ram. The ram has to extend and retract, it has to lock in place, and it can't rotate while the lathe is turning. When you combine all these functions together into a single compact unit like that, you're asking for a lot out of one thing. And it can be sort of tricky to build. Now, some homemade lathes take a really good approach, which is just to take a piece of threaded rod like Acme thread, put it through a couple of threaded inserts or bolts, and grind a point onto one end. That gives you something that you can crank in, crank out, and it's got effectively a dead center on the end. This sort of thing works, and I could totally use it for this. But I'm trying to make my project the real lathe, and so I want it to do literally everything this one does, including having a lockable ram and a Morse taper to accept different accessories. As complicated as this one is, it's actually possible to build one mostly out of wood. I know that it's possible to build a screw action tailstock out of wood, because I've done it. Kind of. When I first started thinking about the real lathe project, I built this prototype as a proof of concept. And it more or less works. I used a piece of threaded rod to actuate the ram, and the ram itself is made out of a piece of steel tube. I filled it with wood, tapped and threaded it so the rod would pass through, and then here in the end, that could be bored out for a Morse taper. I just have a little dead center that I made out of steel rod, but the whole thing works. The problem is, it doesn't work that great. It was difficult to build, it's sort of fragile and flimsy, and I think it would take an awful lot of work to turn this into a really good production unit. But I don't think we need to. In researching lathe tailstocks, I found out that the screw-actuated tailstock ram is by far the most common, but it's not the only one. Another option that you see a lot on metalworking lathes is a lever-operated piston ram, and I've recreated that design here. It's much more mechanically simple, especially much simpler to build, than the screw-actuated version, and it does all the things that it needs to do. You can move the ram in and out, it has plenty of travel, it can be locked in place if I had a locking mechanism, and it's not going to rotate during turning. This arrangement is going to do everything that we need for the real lathe tailstock, and it's going to be much simpler to build from common materials. Since I already built a cam locking mobile base for my tool rest, I'm just going to duplicate that approach here. I'm going to cut a few pieces of plywood, notch them, attach them to the ways, and use threaded rod to lock them down. Go ahead and check out the last video if you want to see the details on that. Now that arrangement does work really well, but I've noticed one big problem is that there's too much stress on the lower plate, and I'm getting some delamination in the plywood when I actuate the cam. That part's going to need to be more rigid, so for the tailstock, I'm going to add in some strips of hardwood in the middle and on the sides to add strength to the plywood and keep it together under pressure. While I'm processing the components for the base of my tailstock, I need to worry about the ram, because that's the most important part of the whole thing. For the main ram stock, I'm going to use this 2 foot, 1 inch black iron pipe nipple. It's very strong and rigid, it's easy to work with, and it's made to acceptably precise dimensions for what we're doing. Now, the biggest challenge that I have with this is that I want it to take Morse taper accessories. But I found just the thing for that. You can go on Amazon and you can buy a hardened steel sleeve that already has an MT2 taper machined into it. I'll put the link for this and all the other tools and materials of the build in the description. I think it was $12, so it was really cheap. The best thing about it is this machined sleeve fits beautifully inside the pipe nipple with almost no slop. It's almost a perfect fit. So between these two things, we're going to be able to build an excellent ram that'll take standard accessories. Here's how we're going to do it. First thing, I need to take the pipe nipple and take the threads off of either end, because they're not doing me any good. 
Once I have the threads removed, I have to do some processing to my hardened steel sleeve. Now right now, it removes tools with this slot using a wedge tool to knock them out. And that's not perfect for our lathe. We'd rather use a knockout bar because it's simpler. So I'm going to take the cutoff disc in an angle grinder and cut off the last three quarters of an inch. And that's going to open up the back end and allow me to knock my tools out really easily with a steel bar. I'm also going to want to hold this into the pipe nipple using a set screw, but there are a couple of problems with that. The first is that this is round, and a set screw would prefer to bite into something flat. So I'm going to take the grinding disc in my angle grinder and grind a nice flat spot right here in the hardened steel, and that's going to help the screw bite down. I'm going to drill and tap my pipe nipple for a quarter twenty bolt. I'm using a bolt here instead of a screw because the bolt head is going to allow me to grab it with a wrench and get some more torque to lock the thing in. But since the screw isn't going to want to bite down against the hardened steel sleeve, I'm also going to take a little piece of brass and drop that into the hole. You could also use aluminum, soft iron, anything that you have around. When you tighten the set screw into the hole against that piece of soft metal, it's going to get crushed into the groove that we made with the grinder and create a tight interference fit between the two parts. The two things should be locked securely together, but you'll be able to get them apart again in a pinch if you need to. With my tailstock ram completed, I needed some sort of assembly for it to ride back and forth in. I started with a pair of maple blocks because of maple strength and durability, but right away I ran into a problem, which is that I don't have any drill bits that exactly match the outer diameter of this black iron pipe. I could special order a Forstner bit in 34 or 33 millimeters, but that would mean buying a tool just for this project. I think there's a better way to go. So I drill out the maple blocks with an inch and a half spade bit, and that gives me a really oversized hole. It's just for clearance. I'm going to dial in my fit by adding a block of material to either side of the maple blocks and making that fit very precisely. I cut up some pieces of polyethylene sheet. I talked about this in the last video. If you don't have any polyethylene plastic, just go to the dollar store and buy the cheapest cutting board they have. That'll be plenty to get you through this project. I cut the polyethylene into small pieces, beveled the edges, drilled it, countersunk it, and screwed it to the maple blocks. Polyethylene is a durable material and it's also slick, like Teflon, and so it's going to have a very smooth glide to it once it's done. To get the holes the exact right size, I used a circle cutter in the drill press. This is a cheap and effective tool that you should get if you don't have it already. I'll link to one in the description. What I like about circle cutters is that they're extremely easy to adjust to a very precise diameter. So I tested it out on a piece of plywood until I had exactly the hole size I wanted, and then bored out the plastic on the ends of the maple. One thing I found out is that when you're drilling out plastic like this, you can't let too many shavings accumulate. They get in between the cutter and the workpiece and slowly push it inward, and you end up with a cone-shaped hole that's too tight, rather than a perfect cylinder that fits the way you want it to. Drill about an eighth or a quarter of an inch and then stop and clear your chips, and do the hole really slowly. Even after that, you might have to dress the inside a little bit with a round file, but you should get an excellent fit that allows a good slide back and forth. With a movable and lockable tailstock carriage and a functioning ram, the next thing I needed to do was connect both of these elements together. And that's kind of a tall order. So for maximum strength and rigidity, I glued together three pieces of three-quarter inch cabinet grade plywood into a big rectangle. And I picked this construction because the tailstock needs to be rigid and resist forces from a lot of different directions. Once my plywood rectangle was done, I added some shaping. I put a little arch in the middle, which is going to let me access the adjustment nut for the cam, and then a big arch in the back end, and that lets the whole thing back up over the end of the ways so that I save a lot of space between centers while still having a stable design. The sandwich of plywood is very rigid and it's going to be good at resisting force back and forth, but it's quite narrow, so it's not going to help me resist forces side to side. So I took a piece of hardwood and created a couple of legs that would stretch out to either side. And then I notched out my plywood rectangle so that I could integrate them in with screws and glue and create a really solid foundation. Then I notched out the top of the tailstock and added some hardwood strips. And these are going to accept the blocks that house my tailstock ram. 
Now the idea with this whole construction is that there are going to be several points where the whole thing is held together just with screws. And that's intentional because the tailstock needs to be adjustable so that it can be at the correct height and it can be aligned with the headstock. Now I've got a complete tailstock assembly and the ram slides back and forth in the bearing blocks really well. It's a little bit tight right now, but that's going to loosen up over time. I've also sanded the black paint off of the iron pipe and I've applied a little bit of paste wax and that's helping it move back and forth really smoothly. The next thing I have to do is take my basic mock-up of the lever and piston arrangement and adapt that to this tailstock. I started by making a little piece of aluminum to reinforce the back end of the tailstock. Ideally, I would have left this part of the tailstock a little bit longer and then it wouldn't have needed reinforcement. So I'll make that change on the plans. But for this, a tiny bit of metal work got the job done. Then I also made an arm out of aluminum and screwed it into the body with a machine screw. I just undersized the hole a little bit, waxed the threads and drove it in and it threaded itself in and it's nice and secure. You could also make this arm out of wood, but if you have a little scrap metal around, it is more rigid and stronger, so it is a better choice for this linkage. Before I could finish making the lever mechanism, I had to do a little bit more work to the ram. The first thing I had to do was make sure that it wouldn't rotate, especially during operations like drilling. So I drilled and tapped a quarter twenty hole in the bottom of the ram and ran in a bolt and a nut. And that would give me a stop to keep the ram from turning. Then I needed something to capture the head of that bolt and nut. And so I cut a couple of pieces of red oak and screwed them to the top of the tailstock assembly. So there's just enough room for the nut and bolt to slide back and forth. Then I needed a way to attach things to the back of the ram to finish the lever assembly. So I drilled out a block of maple, used my angle grinder to cut flutes in the threads at the back of the ram, and threaded it in like a tap. I used this technique in one of the previous videos. It works really well with this pipe. Once that was done, I was able to reassemble the whole thing and finish the ram and lever. Completing the last linkages for the lever mechanism was easy. I just took a long piece of oak, shaped it into a handle, drilled it, and then screwed the whole thing together using coarse threaded machine screws. If you drill the holes for these a little bit undersized, they cut their own threads on their way in and they hold very securely. Once it was done, the only thing left to do was install the tailstock in the lathe. Okay, that was a lot of work, but I'm very happy with the finished product. I've got a tailstock that slides back and forth on the ways and can be locked in place just like the tool rest. The ram moves in and out smoothly and easily, and it's got plenty of power for operations like drilling. If I want to do something like turn between centers, I can just give my locking knob a few twists, just like this, and then the whole thing is securely locked in place. I can also put any Morse Taper 2 accessory right here in the tailstock, and when I need to get it out, I just take a bar, slide it in through the end of the tailstock, and pop it out and switch it out for a Jacob's Chuck or anything else I want. In pretty much every way that matters, this tailstock does everything that a commercial lathe tailstock would do. But there is one more test. How well does a center in this line up with the center in the headstock? They actually line up pretty well. So at this point, I've heard from plenty of people who want me to shut up and turn something already. And believe me, I'm with you. I am really anxious to see my homemade lathe work. I'm anxious to see if it works, but we're not quite there yet. Right now the headstock doesn't have anything for work holding. I can't get a chuck or a faceplate or anything on this until I make some more modifications. And that's just more than I can get done this week. And it's an interesting enough topic that I'm going to do a whole video on it. So check back with me after the holiday when I'm going to have all the different work holding solutions you need for building your own DIY lathe and I'll turn my first pieces. If you enjoyed this video, consider going over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and becoming a supporter of this channel. It's the support of my patrons that makes all of this work possible. And the more support I have, the more better content I can bring to you. You can also go over to rexkruger.com slash store and pick up a t-shirt or a hoodie. I've got a bunch of designs, high quality clothes made and printed in the USA. And when you buy something there, it really supports the channel. And even if you can't support me, I love having my viewers who give me great feedback and comments and give me excellent suggestions on how I can improve my projects. So please keep coming back and thanks for watching.